It's my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. John Donahue. Dr. Donahue is the director of the Brown Institute for Brain Science. Um, as you'll learn, he's not a security specialist. Rather, he studies the way that the brain converts thought into motion and develops tools and techniques to aid patients who are suffering from paralysis. He was invited to speak at the RSA conference simply because his work is so important and so intriguing that it appeals naturally to technologists of all stripes. I think his is also the type of remarkable work that's likely to intersect with our own industry in the future in unexpected ways. Uh, Dr. Donahue is going to give a slide presentation, and once he's concluded the presentation, he and I will have an opportunity for a short question and answer session. Please join me in welcoming Dr. John Donahue. Well, thank you everybody for coming and thank you for the invitation. Um, I am a bit unusual uh, for an audience like this, but uh, I thought I would uh, uh, show you something about uh, the, the kind of work that we're doing to connect the brain to the internet. So what you're looking at here is a young man playing a video game, it's called He-Man, he's supposed to hit the targets uh, that are treasure chests and avoid the goblins. And this is something that is... Uh, uh, you know, not, not so uh, surprising, except to say maybe he's not doing a great job, except this young man who's in his 20s, his name is Matt Nagel, is uh, completely paralyzed. He cannot move from the neck down due to an injury in his spinal cord, and he's controlling that cursor with his brain. He has a tiny sensor implanted in his, what's called the motor cortex. It's where his hand commands are generated. They come out, and they're being decoded on the outside through a series of computers, and those brain signals are being used uh, to control the cursor by him thinking about moving his hand. So this is a device we're developing to help people who are paralyzed. Uh, it is, it's been called a neural interface system or a brain-computer interface and all these other things. We just call it BrainGate. And the device itself, uh, I'm going to tell you about how this device uh, works, and I'm going to give you a little bit of background of why the device could actually be developed. How could we possibly go from the brain to the outside world uh, uh, with, with a cable, basically, and a few computers. And then I'm going to try to give you some perspective of how all of this uh, might fit into our world in the future. So one might ask, why, why would you want uh, to even build such a thing? And the, one reason is, is that there are a large number of diseases that lead to the condition of paralysis in which people's brains are able to think they're cognitively intact, but the messages from the movement areas to the outside world can't be con aren't connected, they're broken off. The common one that many of you probably know is spinal cord injury, and what spinal cord injury does is it basically interrupts the cable from the brain to the outside, to the spinal cord, and uh, by interrupting it, the commands can't get out. So the, there are millions of people who are paralyzed from this ver variety of diseases that I've listed here, and I won't go through, some of them are just gibberish to many of you. They all share in common the, uh, the feature that the brain functions and the body does not. So we need a way to get from the brain to the outside world. And this is the system that we developed. It is, uh, th this is the brain gate. It consists of this tiny sensor. Uh, it's uh, the, the little black sensor with the little hairs coming out of it is a, something the size of a baby aspirin, four by four millimeters. It has 100 hair-thin electrodes coming out of it that are sensors that are put into the brain. It's put into this, what's called arm area of the brain. Currently, in its sort of crude pilot form, it has a plug on the head where all those signals come out. The crackling noise you hear is signals from one of them, and I'll tell you more about those in a minute. And the, the signal is then processed uh, from, from, through a cable. It goes through cable, through an amplifier, through a cart full of computers, and gets converted into basically what's a mouse control. So that's the system that we call BrainGate that we developed, and it was actually developed uh, based on a number of years of work uh, in, a, in my laboratory and in other people's laboratories to show that these kinds of things would actually work in humans, uh, but we didn't have the testing in humans. <clears throat> so here, here's just a concept diagram of how we thought through the problem and led from something that was a, an idea and had its basis in, in basic science research, but uh, had to really be tested in humans. So in this condition, the brain is disconnected from action, uh, and we're trying to build a bridge from the brain to the outside world. The brain signals could be used to control computers, uh, 
That is directly plugging the brain into the internet through a computer potentially, to assistive technologies, that is anything that can help people, to robots, uh, say an assistive robot that could help an individual who is paralyzed, to artificial limbs, that is people who have uh, lost their limb and you could make an artificial limb and then connect the brain back up to that limb and, and move it, or even back to the muscles themselves. So you could reanimate the muscles, put the brain and reconnect it back to the muscles and, and allow movement to happen again. So most people say, how the heck could you possibly do that? And it is a big and complex problem. And these are some of the big questions we had to answer. What, what area of the brain would you even select to get signals, say, to move your arm, which is the kind of signals that we targeted? And what, what are the signals you would even look for? What are the brain signals that uh, give rise to commands? What are they like? Uh, what's the sensor you would use? Uh, you just saw the sensor, and I'll show you a little bit more about it, about what is that, uh, what could you use to pick up these brain signals? Uh, and pr possibly leave them there for, say, 70 or 80 years. How to decode sort of fits in with the theme of this conference. Uh, we don't have a Rosetta Stone in neuroscience. We have to figure out what the brain's uh, coding scheme is and try to understand it. And finally, what technologies, and I just showed you the kinds of technologies we might connect to. So I'll just, what, what we're going to do now is have a little Neuro 101 and just give some background information, I think, that will... Uh, have some interesting uh, parallels to, the, uh, to computing, internet, and, and may uh, generate some interest from those of you who are interested in security. Uh, but also, I think it's uh, fascinating to get some overview of, of how the brain works, and it'll help you understand how, in fact, we, we can build BrainGate, build a, a connection between the brain and the outside world. So the blue thing there is the brain, the outside is the cerebral cortex. Uh, it's the part we think is the intelligent part of the nervous system where all the smart stuff goes on. Uh, it's covered by this rind, there's a, so if you slice through it, you can see that sort of uh, grayish looking stuff. Uh, there's a, a, a sheet, it's about the size of a large pizza, but it's all crumpled up inside your head, so it fits. It's about two millimeters thick, or about as thick as an orange peel, and basically all the computing for your thinking and speaking and hearing is all going on in that. There are about 10 billion neurons, uh, and neurons are brain cells, they're spidery things. They have the thick things you can see in that one neuron are recipient parts of the neuron. They receive inputs. They have about 5,000 of them. They're, most of them are very weak connections that converge from large numbers of other neurons. Uh, and they emit signals. They sum up the signals, and they fire these electrical spikes, uh, which are actually called spikes, and they're about a thousandth of a sec second long impulse, and that's the communication system of neurons. So neurons are very sophisticated computational devices that take a lot of weak inputs and convert them into pulses. Um, and those connections that they have with other neurons are called synapses, just what was shown there. So there's an interesting parallel between the brain and, and other real-world phenomena, including the Internet. So those of you who know about small-world nets or those about other kinds of uh, neural networks, uh, the brain is on, on the left there, and on the right is actually uh, uh, the Internet. Uh, and it's a connection, a, a connection diagram of, of an internet. And first of all, it looks a little bit like a brain, but it's, the brain is actually wired like this. And the, the, the parallel is the brain is wired with lots of local connections and a few, largely just a few uh, long distance connections. And by that, basically everything is connected to everything else, but functions tend to be clustered in areas. So if you're trying to find an area, uh, say for connecting to something that will control arm movement, we know it's basically from 100 years of neuroscience that uh, functions are localized. So in the back of your head, which is to the right there, there's seeing just above your ear. There's an area for hearing. And there's a strip that goes from the top of your head out to your jawbone about half an inch wide called the motor cortex. It's a strip of that cortex. And all of your movements are generated or funneled through that area. And it's subdivided so that the middle third controls your arm. And in fact, not only does it control your arm, it just controls the arm on the other side of your body. So we know where to go in the brain. That's the area that we would target. That's the place that generates commands. Now, what are, what are the signals? And brain signals are extraordinarily complex. There are basically two kinds. One's called field potentials, and one is called spikes. So unlike a computer, which just has uh, basically you know, a diode that goes up and down, zeros and ones, the, the uh, inputs to cells, the broad uh, currents flowing around in your brain is one kind of signal, which is this FP or field potential. And uh, you can see one running across the screen there. And it, it is, the most familiar example is the EEG. It's the electrical potentials you can record on the outside of your head. 
And it's due to all the currents flowing through all the neurons in your brain. So it's sort of a smeared function 